Hello everyone. In this session, we will focus on the closing process for a merchandising company. While we have already covered the closing process in a prior session, this example specifically highlights the differences between a merchandising company and a non-merchandising company. Remember, the closing process has four key steps. Let me review them here before we start. We close revenues, which has credit balances, to income summary, closing revenues. Then we close expenses. Expenses will have a debit balance to income summary. Then we close income summary. It could have a debit balance. It could have a credit balance to retained earnings. This step will adjust retained earnings for the periods net income or net loss. If we have more revenues than expenses, our retained earnings will go up and vice versa. And the last step, we will close dividend to retained earnings, thus reducing retained earnings because dividend is money taken out of the company. By the end of the session, you should have a good understanding about the closing process for a merchandising company. We will also, a multiple, we will also work a multiple choice question. Let's go ahead and get started with this example. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, FarhatLectures.com. Our financial accounting course is best for online students and students who are struggling in their financial accounting courses. We cover all the essentials from debits and credits, adjusting entries, closing entries, financial statements, and all balance sheet accounts. Our comprehensive course include lectures, multiple choice, true false, as well as practical exercises. Start your free trial today to help you pass your financial accounting course. Your success starts here. We will start the session with a partial trial balance listing several accounts with their dollar amount. And what we're gonna do first is we're gonna go through a quick exercise as a review and determine what are the normal balances for each account. Sales, what type of an account? That's revenue. It has a normal balance of a credit. Sales discount, we were introduced to this account recently. What type of account is sales discount? It's a contra revenue. It will have a normal balance of a debit. It reduces sales, it's a contra sales. How about sales returns and allowances? That's also a contra revenue. It has a normal debit balance. That's also a new account that we were introduced to recently. How about cost of goods sold? What type of account is cost of goods sold? Cost of goods sold is an expense account. And what do expenses have? Normal balances. Also, this is a new account that we were introduced to when we talked about merchandising operation sales discount, sales returns and allowances, and cost of goods sold. Now, the remainder of the accounts are expenses, and guess what? All expenses will have a debit balance. Then we have dividend. Dividend will also have a debit balance. The reason I'm going over this again, because I want to go over the closing entry one more time and take this opportunities to emphasize those three new account and go through a closing entries, journal entries, to make you more comfortable with this. So let's start the closing process. The first, thing, the first thing we are going to close is the credit balance of temporary accounts. What do we have credit balance at as temporary accounts? Usually it's sales. But you have to understand later on, we are going to see an account called gains. But don't worry about this now. Step one, simply put close revenue. Where do we close revenue to? close revenue to income summary. Therefore, since sales will have a credit balance, I am going to debit sales and transfer the account to income summary. So on the income summary account, now you have half a million. That's a step one. We're done. Step two, close debit balance temporary accounts. Now on the prior session, when we looked at the closing, we say close expenses. Well, in this session, we introduce sales discount, sales returns and allowances and cost of goods sold. As I told you, those will have also a debit balances. So sales discount is closed with expenses. Now you can close them separately. It doesn't really matter, but you can close them all in one shot as you are closing your expenses. Therefore, sales discount, sales returns and allowances, and all of those are closed all at once by crediting those accounts 
and debiting the total to income summary. Now, here's what we have in, for an income summary. An income summary, we had 500,000 from step one, and now we have 507,700 from step two. Now, step three is close income summary. Hold on a second. What am I saying? I have more expenses and debit balances than credit balance of 7,700. A debit, a debit balance means I am at a loss. The company incurred a loss in this example, and the loss is 7,700. Now, in the first example I showed you again, that's the, in quote, the norm. But now we have a loss, and the loss is 7,700. Since we have a debit balance and income summary, we are going to credit income summary and debit retained earnings so retained earnings going down and this should make sense because this 7700 is a loss the last stop is to close dividend dividend is closed also to retained earnings by reducing retained earnings so you might be saying how can the owner takes out take out dividend when we incur the loss well, we're going to assume for the sake of this illustration we have a beginning retained earnings of a hundred thousand retained earnings was reduced by the net loss then retained earnings was reduced by the dividend and we have ending retained earnings of 85,300. So it's very important to know the accounts that influence that changes retained earnings. Retained earnings, this is the beginning balance, just as just basically given 100,000. Retained earnings is increased by net income or reduced by net loss as we did in this example and reduced by dividend. Are these the only accounts that influence retained earnings? Absolutely not. There are other accounts that influence retained earnings, but not covered in this session. But those are the two main accounts that influence retained earnings. We're going to have a whole session about retained earnings. It's extremely important, but that's all what you need to know for now as a financial accounting student. Let's take a look at this multiple choice question from farhatlectures.com. ABC Corp had the following account balances at the end of the year. Sales, sales discount, sales returns and allowances, cost of goods sold, operating expenses, and dividend. And the question is, what will be the closing entry for the income summary? So simply put, what do we do with the income summary? Now remember, we have this income summary account. So first, let's start to close sales. We're going to debit sales we're going to debit sales 450 and we are going to credit income summary 450 therefore we have 450 in income summary then sales discount sales returns and allowances cost of goods sold and all the expenses which amount to 410,000 what are we going to do we are going to credit those accounts 410 and debit income summary 410 so we're going to debit income summary 410 now we find the balance for income summary the balance is 40,000 and this represent a net income or a profit of 40,000 for the company now how do I close this account well how do I close it if I have a debit if I have a credit balance I am going to debit this account 40,000 so debit income summary is correct debit income summary 50 is incorrect debit debit retained earnings credit income summary is incorrect debit re, credit income summary 50,000 is, 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 is incorrect so debit income summary and credit retained earnings so it's gonna happen I debit my income summary and I increase retained earnings because the company made a profit of 40,000 and retained earnings will increase by exactly 40,000 things make sense what should you do now you want to go to Farhat lectures look at additional resources multiple choice lectures that's going to help you if you are a financial accounting student if you are a CPA exam candidate CMA or you're or you are taking this course for professional development. Invest in yourself. Good luck, study hard, and of course, stay safe.